G'day, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me, and today I'm talking about the platypus. Platypus are one of the strangest creatures on Earth. They're also one of the oldest mammals to have ever existed. They are monotremes, and a monotreme is an egg-laying mammal. That's right. So a male and female platypus mate, the female then has an egg inside her. She lays that egg, she incubates it in a little pseudo pouch. And what that means is she doesn't have a pouch like a kangaroo. It's just a fold of skin that becomes a little bit thicker on her belly. She incubates the egg, it hatches into a tiny little platypus that's pink. It has no fur, no eyes, they all come later. And that little platypus starts to push and instead of suckling like a cow or a sheep would from a nipple, what the platypus does is it pushes against a spot on its mum's belly. And behind that spot is what's called a mammary gland and it produces milk. And when it pushes on that spot, a bit of milk comes out and that's how they drink. They're really, really primitive. And when some of the first platypus ever were found by scientists, they thought it was a hoax that someone had made different bits and pieces of an animal and stuck them together. The external features of a platypus are also really strange. They've got this soft duck-like bill and it actually has little electric receptors. So what happens is when they feed underwater, they go like this, like a mine detector or a metal detector. And their bill is so sensitive that even a little worm emits little electronic pulses and the platypus can sense it. That's how it finds its food. Now, it's got nostrils on the top of its bill that it breathes through, grinding plates in its mouth and little cheek pouches. So it catches that food underwater, but it has to come up to the surface to grind it up and swallow it. Then it dives again. It has tiny little eyes. It can see, but underwater they're closed. So it doesn't have a great need for them. Its fur is like velvet and it's waterproof and incredibly soft. And when you come down to the hands, they're incredible because the platypus's knuckles are actually at the middle of our finger and that's where their claws are. But when they swim, they open their hands and the full webbing like a duck's feet comes out. The male platypus have a venomous spur. That's right, they're venomous. And if that venom gets into a person, uh, it's one of the most painful things on earth. I've never, ever been spurred by a platypus and I never would. And the spur is about this long. Maybe you could look it up. It's a little hollow point. When the venom comes from up in their thigh or near their leg, but up in the thigh and it travels down and goes through the spur. They use that venom when males are fighting. It's for one male against another. A platypus, when they are active, are just about always in the water. They can walk across land, but they come into the water to feed. And they're pretty safe from predators when they're under the water. When they come onto the land, their predators could be quolls, dingoes, birds of prey. So they try and make the distance there on land very short and they go into hidden burrows. And when they go in the burrow, it's a very narrow opening because their fur is wet. Even though they're waterproof, the fur's still wet. They want to go in and that burrow entrance squeezes the water off their body. And once they're in the burrow, they're pretty safe. Now you could have something like a python go in there and try and predate them, but normally, or sometimes, the burrow even happens, they go underwater to go up into their burrow, so the snake can't even get in there. But once inside that burrow, it's safe, it's dark, it's warm, and that's where they breed. So a male and female platypus will mate. Um, normally, they'll mate in something like springtime, and when they do, that's when the males are really territorial, but a female will go and then go through that life cycle of uh, egg to laying the egg to incubation to a little platypus. And you really common to have twins. Guess what little platypus are called? Puggles, all monotremes. And there's three species, the long-beaked echidna in New Guinea, the short-beaked echidna in Australia, and the platypus. Platypus are an ancient species. They come from the Gondwanian times of temperate forests all throughout Australia. Now they live along the Great Dividing Range that runs the entire distance of Eastern Australia. They're found from North Queensland all the way to Tasmania. Uh, they too, uh, their numbers are on a decline, which means their species faces threats. And the worst case of that could be extinction. 
but their waterways in, in some areas are still okay. The recent fires also gave the platypus a really hard time. Uh, their numbers were radically reduced. They can't live without water. They can't live in heavily polluted water. They can't live in water that has so much silt, which is when topsoil runs off the earth and uh, there's no food for them in there. So drought and fire, when the fires burn and then the ash washes into the waterways is a really big problem for them. You might wonder, how does a platypus breathe underwater? Well, they don't. They need to breathe air like us. So every time they come up and surface, they take a breath, kind of like a whale would. And then they dive again. They can go down for a couple of minutes. I had some really hard times the last few months. Now we all know about the very serious drought and the big bushfires that ravaged platypus habitat. I spent lots and lots of days and weeks out rescuing platypus and turtles. Now, three of them I still have in care. And at the end of winter, I'll release them back to the wild. But when they come in to give you an idea, they were caught in the middle of the day. You shouldn't see a platypus in the middle of the day, not when it's hot in the middle of summer. And their body weight was one third. So a platypus should weigh about a kilo for these females. They weighed three to 400 grams. Now, sadly, there were so many I couldn't get to, so many I couldn't rescue, but we did our part and we tried. Now, at least with those three, maybe later on at another time in months, once we're all past this, I can let them go back and you can join me for that. Okay, here's some homework. I want you to find out how long a platypus can live. Once you've found that out, I want you to tell me whether they live in family groups or in their territories, or are they social? There's two things for you. See ya. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us, and hopefully you. Now, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. This is what I do, connecting people with nature, and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.